So we'll bring you a bit more now on the five-day strike, which is planned by junior doctors and due to start on the 12th of September. Uh, joining us now live from central London, an NHS culture expert from the University of Warwick, that's the doc Dr Jack Saunders. Uh, Jack, a very good afternoon to you. Uh, culturally, uh, what is the impact of all this strife on the NHS? Um, well, I, I think... Culturally, it's indicative of um, quite a big shift in the NHS over the last maybe 20, 30 years in, in terms of um, staff's relationship to the NHS. Um, I think in, if you look back 30, 40 years ago, doctors saw themselves as quite sort of separate, semi-separated from the NHS in a lot of ways as a sort of independent group with, with an attachment to it. And, and now I think... NHS, uh, the NHS for doctors is really central to how they see medicine, to how they see um, their role in, in Britain. Well, they almost see themselves, uh, I suppose, as custodians of whatever it is that the NHS stands for. I think that's certainly true, yeah, that, that doctors... Um, a lot of doctors do see themselves as custodians of those values, and, and I think that's why... Um, the, the idea of having enough resources yeah. over these seven days of the NHS um, has become so central to this dispute. D does that mean they're guilty of, well, I mean, I suppose their critics might say it can render them priggish and sanctimonious. Uh, others will say, no, they're just standing up for what's right. Well, I mean, I think you have to, what you have to see is that central to this is that this is their working lives. And for doctors... Um, they, they, they would see it as they understand the working life of the NHS, they understand the resources that are needed, um, and it's their clinical expertise that, that's needed, and therefore cons their consent should be central to any changes in the NHS. Culturally, Jack, something else seems to be happening, doesn't it? I mean, you've already mentioned, you know, 30 years ago there was a different kind of culture, they were perhaps much more sort of establishment figures. Uh, now there's, there seems to be a, a strain of militancy which you're more accustomed to seeing you know, around the braziers uh, and picket lines of previous industrial action, not necessarily from, from well, highly educated, well-paid doctors. Um, I, don't, I don't actually think that that's changed very much. I mean, there's a long history of doctors being very active and collectively active um, in shaping what our NHS became, which goes right back to the founding of the NHS in 1948. Um, and there are various points in the NHS's history, like 1962 and 1975, when doctors are collectively trying to um, shape what the NHS is. But voting, and what but voting down their leadership, actually voting, as, as that happened before, they've actually this time they've voted down, you know, back in the, earlier in the summer, voting down what their leadership agreed on the new contract. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's different. Actually, what I think is different is the leadership's behaviour. There's a, there's a, a long history of. Um, different categories of doctors uh, wanting to engage in some kind of collective action um, and actually their leadership behaving very undemocratically in a way and, and sort of ignoring what it is that their constituent members want. And, and actually what's at the heart of the fact that this dispute is still ongoing is that the leadership of the BMA is lead listening to its members who voted against this contract. Uh, we've covered this story for, for months now. We've interviewed countless uh, junior doctors. One constant refrain it comes along the lines of, if we don't get what we want, we'll take our business elsewhere. We'll think about emigrating maybe to Australia, where terms and conditions might fit our, our lives and our vocation better. That, culturally, that feels new too. Uh, I mean, doctors have always been a very international workforce. I mean, one of the things you find in the 1960s and 70s is that um, doctors are emigrating to Canada and the US. Um, doctors are obviously migrating into Britain as well um, from South Asia and Africa and the Caribbean. Um, and actually, uh, the idea that, that doctors would move around um, is, I think, something that's been... Um, constant throughout the NHS's history. Jack Saunders is an NHS culture expert from the University of Warwick. Thanks very much for your time. Really interesting. Thank you.